the forehead of your robot. Hello, my name is Drew Pickles, and today I'll be reading the most swellest Teledebeast roll pasta, featuring me. This was a parody to those Teledebeast Lost episodes, that featured shitty references that don't fit the scare factor. You all maybe heard of that narration about Tex taking over Teledebe land in that one Teledebe's Creepy Pasta, but later enlisted and put into a playlist of Creepy Pasta narrations that featured Tex and cursed THX intros. Now, after all that riff draft, let's begin. Teledebe's was a popular TV series created by the BBC and Redlow. You know how the show goes, but there was a lost episode, meant to be the finale, but the episode was scrapped due to it being too graphic for children. My name is David, I am 14 years old, and I want to tell you this story. Sorry to interrupt, but the capitalization was fucked up. You don't have to capitalize all the words in every sentence. When you begin your sentence, you must capitalize a word at the start of your sentence. Also you must capitalize the name of a character, person, place, or thing. That's basic grammar you know, so let's get back to the story. I was just at my home video store, looking through the kids aisle. There were shows like Dinosaur Train, Spongebob, and others. I soon noticed a Teletubbies VHS tape. The tape had a U, Universal, rating, and it was called, Teletubbies, Group Pickles Rules the Earth, and other stories. I went to the register, and paid five dollars for the VHS. When I took it home, I looked at the tape. After opening the case, I noticed the VHS had no factory label. So I decided to insert it. The VHS began with the BBC Multimedia logo from 1997, and it went to a few other BBC VHS promos, and went to the episode itself. Again, sorry to interrupt. Also, ever heard of paragraphs? Seems like this offer didn't have the balls to create paragraphs, which that the story is nothing but a fucking wall of text, along with the unnecessary as shit capitalization. Let me spit out what it said on Wikipedia. A paragraph, from ancient Greek, paragraphus, to write beside, is a self-contained unit of discourse in writing dealing with a particular point or idea. A paragraph consists of three or more sentences. Though not required by the syntax of any language, paragraphs are usually an expected part of formal writing, used to organize longer prose. So this is why you have to create paragraphs for your pastas, and use proper capitalization. Also you didn't describe the cover on the VHS case. Now back with the story. The episode began with a normal intro, but it was slowed down. The episode began with the Teletubbies, oh, la la, Tinky Winky, and Dipsy, playing in the field, until the speaker said something. Group Pickles is coming. After that, the magical event played. It was just the Rugrats intro, and Group Pickles appeared. Hello my name is Group Pickles and today I am going to Teletubby land. He said. The more the Teletubbies showed him, the more bummed out he became. At that point, the VHS cut to a demonic, blood-stained Teletubby sitting in the field with black eyes. It then cut to Drew Pickles. Ha 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 Do you wanna see what real swell fun is like? He asked. The Tubbies said yes, and he soon tore the head of Tinky Winky, with hyper-realistic blood flying everywhere, which goes like swa 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 that was swell. What the hell was the point of me tearing off Tinky Winky's head with my bare hands? Also you forgot the sludge hammer thing, which is sludge hammer but the first E on the word is replaced with a U. To be Franklin, I was supposed to slaughter one or more of the characters with my sludge hammer, not to rip their fucking heads off without any weapon. I was disgusted. How could such a children's show take a dark and twisted turn? I asked myself in fear. Group Pickles soon said in a more demonic tone. <laughs> Tell me bye bye. He soon killed the Teletubbies in different ways. Go was killed by a mower. Lala was fed into a mower, like Po, and Dipsy soon ran, trying not to get caught. <laughs> Found you. Drew Pickles said, before he fed her, him, into a wood machine. By the way, Dipsy was a boy. Bag, that was swell. And as for you viewers, you're next. Also that was the wrong you are, spelled, Y-O-U-R. It's supposed to be spelled as, Y-O-U, apostrophe, R-E. I think this shitty grammar thing still fits with it being a troll pasta, cause troll pastas or crappy pastas might attend to have shitty grammar. Then, the tape ended. 
I could not believe such a kid-friendly series could end on such a gruesome episode. I soon contacted one of the Teletubbies creators on Twitter. Here is what she, he or they, had to say. One thing, how in the heck did you find that? I never ever, ever thought I would think about that final shame forever, or again. Don't tell anyone about this David. Yes that's my name, but Teletubbies goes back further than you know. I used to have a really boring job as a teen, and I sketched little drawings of the Tubbies. The episode you saw was never supposed to be seen by anyone but me and a few friends of mine. It was a very very awful thing to do, but we made the episode as a joke. A guy from my old job, who everyone hated, had lost a child to a crazed serial killer, who is apparently still out there somewhere. Anyway, we made it so we could make fun of how he came into work usually, crying like a fool, which is why you saw Mr. and Mrs. Watterson cry so much in the episode. I know, I am deeply sorry for what I did, which is why I tried to bury that stupid thing years ago. Literally, I went out into the countryside with my mates and dug a hole and buried it, and bag, that was swell. And that, my swell folks, was Teletubbies' lost episode, Group Pickles Rules the Earth. My thoughts exactly, was literally confusing. The ending is copied off from the Amazing World of Gumball lost episode, The Greeting, to which fits the crappy pasta standards. Also there isn't a scene in that Teletubbies episode, where it featured Mr. and Mrs. Watterson, or Richard and Nicole, crying. There is so much shit going on here. As I stated, with it being a troll pasta slash crappy pasta, there is capitalization abuse, a big lack of paragraphs, poor grammar, and confusing storytelling. Also, you see Jerry still even forgot swell things, like sludge hammers, my laugh, the swore that goes with the blood, and my gang, the robot punch. If you don't know what the robot punch is, it consists of random characters like Microsoft Sam and Mike. Barney the Dinosaur from Barney and Friends, Ronald McDonald, Nintendo 64 era Mario and Luigi, Scar from The Lion King, Chaz Finster, Mr. Potato Head, and Anne from Toy Story, Baldy from Baldy's Basics, Brian and Stewie Griffin from Family Guy, The Smiling Friends Duo, Rick and Morty, Roger Smith from American Dad, The Penguins of Madagascar, Mr. Krabs and Squidward Tentacles from SpongeBob SquarePants, Arthur Reed and Buster Baxter from the show Arthur, Pennywise from a 1990s version of the movie, It, that big and mean line from Madagascar 2, and many many more. After all that riff draft, I rate this story as a 6 out of 10 of swellness. It could have been better when the story never gets confusing, and the sentence structuring and grammar being proper. Forgot to mention, this was written by no other than David 1,235,463,563. As to David, and even everyone else, if you're writing a good creepypasta, please use those simple writing methods, like proper capitalization and grammar, add paragraphs, and don't ever make your stories severely confusing. My name is Drew Pickles, the swellest person in the creepypasta community, that brings you this message. Thanks for watching, and have a swell day my swell folks.